This is selling in Walmart. This is the Stress Nut. It's a fidget toy designed by Nelson Diaz, who is a DJ and producer down in Miami, Florida. He created this about a year ago when he had gotten into 3D printing and he had made this fidget toy to kind of mess with himself. A few other artists looked at it and they really liked it because as creatives, very often we have a lot of loose hands and we need something to do. And this is way better than a lot of other fidget spinners out there because it actually has an ASMR kind of component to it. So it has a really great amount of interaction. So once he started to see the interest from it, Papa Nelson decided to go ahead and take a year and just develop this. So he started collaborating with a number of different artists and that allowed him to get a lot more distribution. They perfected the design a little bit and they ended up creating a print farm in order to actually produce these, initially starting with Bamboo Labs machines because they were fast and easy. First of all, let's go ahead and just look at the design of this thing. Overall, it's a very good design. It's very manufacturable. Since it's only two pieces, which is very simple, it's easy to get produced and to produce at scales. But each feature of it is actually already pretty good. The text is on the side for the most part, and the threads themselves are large and chunky and easy with a fairly low tolerance between the two pieces so you don't have to worry about fit and feel or anything like that to still get that really nice spin and connection. It also, as a design itself, has so many components that are just really good. As we mentioned before, there's the joy of having something actually occur as you screw something on, but it also has a lot of satisfying features. Both the sound of itself, even though it's plasticky, sounds great, and then if you do that flick and have it connect, it's a lot more satisfying than other fidget spinners. A traditional fidget spinner just is not as good because you set it spinning and that's great, but then it's just kind of there. It doesn't really give you feedback after that first flick. Whereas this thing you can just diddle around with and it's kind of like working with a Rubik's Cube without the stress of dealing with a Rubik's Cube. So it's a really good design for a toy, even though it's a really simple concept and generally it's simpler the concept the better if you are getting into complexity then you have all kinds of problems but the other benefit of this also is that it's very expandable since they made this original stress nut they've introduced some new versions including the grip nut which is a lot meatier and since it's such a simple and basic design they can expand it to make it more topical to particular sorts of holidays so they actually did the egg nut last Easter which is a really good variation on this in order to keep the sales up once everybody kind of has one because it is a product that you don't really sell twice very often. Once somebody has one, they generally just need the one. So as I said, DJ Nelson, once he got this idea and had it rolling, he decided to take a year off from music producing in order to pursue this idea and a few others. He actually does a lot of stuff, both electric motorcycles, speakers, you name it, he's messing around with it. So fidget toys were really not that big of a stretch. As I said, they initially built out a large print farm in order to produce them, but they actually started running into roadblocks around enough electricity to run all of the machines, which is why they ended up reaching out to us to discuss this project of how to get them produced because they were looking at large orders from Walmart. They had been doing test orders and they'd already sold out 2,000 of these. So there was a lot of demand and they were gonna need to scale up because there were a lot of other deals coming down the pipe. And again, since Nelson was able to work with other DJs, he automatically has an influencer network to where if a celebrity DJ is using one of these, that's a huge amount of free marketing, even though it's something really useful for that celebrity. It's the best type of product in that regard. You're not shilling it out there. People just like it and they use it and then that promotes it. The word of mouth carries itself. But that extra demand was going to stretch the capacity that they had because individual print farms turn into a large job after a little while, regardless of what machines you have, because building out a factory is not a simple thing. It is not just putting machines up on shelves. It's building all the infrastructure and logistics around it. Everything from making sure that the parts are good quality to getting them into the package for Walmart. So working with a third party manufacturer was a reasonable option for him to go and explore. So overall, this is just a really good example of a product that people can really get a lot onto. Nelson had the marketing in place. He also had the business acumen to do it and the wherewithal to get started with something. But from that, they were able to take a 3D printed product and carry it all the way into Walmart, which many people don't consider feasible, even though right now mass production printing can absolutely produce these types of products in as big of volumes as necessary. So the idea that like 3D printing isn't ready for final consumer products is just incorrect because it's being done all the time. And there's so many other options and products like this that very often we talk about on this channel, but they're just great examples of what can be done with 3D printing in order to avoid having to do molds so that you can have a lot more flexible products that evolve over time while also still creating really great products. Have a great day, everybody.